It is my hope that you are doing okay. Today's video, we are going to revise English paper one and it's one section. How to answer the narrative questions in paper one. So you want to watch to the end to learn more because this year we are expecting a narrative in paper one. We just expecting higher chances without wasting time. Let us begin. Simple question in this area comes from the opening and the closing formula. So in this area, you might get a question like, give the functions of the opening and the closing formula. You might find a question like this, identify the opening and the closing formula used in the story. What roles do they play? So I'm going to give you two examples of opening formula and two examples of closing formula. Opening formula, once upon a time or long time ago. Closing formula, that's the end of my story. Or, and they live happily after. Or maybe my story ends there. So what is the function of the opening formula? I'm going to give you three. Number one, it captures the attention of the audience captures the attention of the audience. Number two, takes the audience from the world of reality to the world of imagination. Number three, most important, it signifies the beginning of our story. We move to the closing formula. On the first function, signifies the end of our story. Number two, remember the opening formula took us to the world of imagination or fantasy. Now the function of the closing formula, two, it brings the audience back from the world of imagination to the world of reality. And number three, it paves a way for the next presentation. So those are the functions of the closing and the opening formula and there is a question here there was like a narrative written and the first question was if you were to narrate this story to your class how will you say the opening words how will you say the opening two words in the first paragraph and why so we have our opening two words long long time ago long long time ago so long long how are you gonna say it so when saying the opening formula you're going to use the tone the falling tone or the falling intonation the reason is to capture the attention of the audience to capture the attention of the audience the second part Things that would indicate your audience is enjoying your story. This is a question. Mention two things that would indicate your audience uh, is enjoying the story as you narrate. These are some of the things that would show you that your audience is enjoying the story that you are narrating. One, if the audience is sitting in an upright posture. Remember, you're supposed to give a full answer. If you just give them like this, it's not making sense. So the first one, if the audience is sitting in an upright posture. Number two, if the audience is answering their questions. Might ask the question and they don't answer. If they don't answer, then they are not participating. And if they are answering the questions, then it shows that they are following your story. And then... If the audience is maintaining meaningful eye contact and um, if they respond appropriately. Something is funny then, they are going to laugh. Something is sad or you said something that makes them sad, they are going to put that sad facial expression. You say something, they want to agree with you. They can nod, they can clap too because they are enjoying whatever you are telling them or the story that you are narrating. From that, we move to the next part. 
things that indicate your audience is not enjoying your story. Sometimes you might narrate that story and the audience is bored. So how do you know that audience is bored? And I'm going to share some. Number one, if the audience is yawning, actually they're not participating. If the audience is looking away, which means they are not maintaining eye contact. If the audience is murmuring, murmuring or making some sort of noise. Number three, if the audience is doodling. And this doodling is actually to make unnecessary drawing. You draw the map of Africa, you draw a picture of amoeba. And the next, if the audience is leaning backward, if they are not responding appropriately, you crack a joke, they are not laughing, they are not even nodding, and they are not clapping. How to make the story interesting if you are narrating it? So this is how that question can be asked. Uh, can be asked. How will you make the story you have just read interesting if you were to narrate it to an audience? Or how will you make sure that your audience remain glued to the story? And uh, we have two ways. We use the verbal cues and the non-verbal cues. The verbal cues, actually you have to use uh, the word of mouth. The non-verbal, you don't have to use the word of mouth. So at this part, the verbal cues, the question is not specific. So we can use either, either this one or this one. But if the question specifically states, state the non-verbal ways, you will give the non-verbal ways or the verbal ways or the verbal ways you have to give the verbal but here it's a general so you have to use or you can use both so the verbal we have tone variation that is the rising and the falling tone and we have said when you say the opening formula long time ago you use the falling tone to capture the attention of the audience so tone is number one Number two, we have the mimicry. Mimicry or mimicry. You imitate the voice. So in imitating the voice, I'm sure you're going to use the word of mouth. And maybe you can uh, add to be audible. I would be audible enough. So those are the verbal. The non-verbal, we have several. And they have to be appropriate. So we have use of appropriate gestures use of appropriate dramatization, use of appropriate facial expression, you can smile, you can laugh, use of appropriate body movement, the pregnant poses, and so on. And also, in this area, when answering this question, you are supposed to support your answer from the narrative itself. If it's a facial expression, I uh, are you going to be, to be happy or sad? I will put on a sad facial expression uh, because the hyena was in pain. I will put on a, I will smile when saying this line if it mentions smiling. And maybe dramatization. Remember in dramatization, you imitate an action. For example, I would dramatize how the hair ran. So you have to support it. Uh, from the narrative itself check the one that is present and then pick it and then support it if you don't support them there is no mark in that case so that is all about to make your story interesting our second last part how to capture the attention of the audience before you begin a story you're assuming you have not begun your story you have not begun narrating your story what can you do to make sure that your audience or you capture their attention? It's clearing the throat. So your, your answer, I would clear my throat. Apart from that, you can blow a whistle. I would blow a whistle. In addition to that, that is the number three. You can clap your hands. I would clap my hands another thing you can do you can pose a riddle a proverb 
or sing a song. And lastly, you can ask a question. So phrase those answers in the right way. Lastly, we have the features of oral narratives. Features that qualify the above story to be an oral narrative. This is how that question was asked. Identify and illustrate two features of oral narrative present in the story. We have so many. We have personification, opening formula, closing formula, the dialogue, the use of songs, the repetition, the idiophones, the fantasy. All those are the features of oral narratives. So you have to check the one that is evident in your story uh, and give it as your answer. And then you must support it. If you have personification, maybe the hair and the, uh, the hyena have been personified. They are talking like human beings. Repetition, mention the words or the phrases that have been repeated. If you have a dialogue, dialogue between the hair and the hyena, then quote that dialogue and then use the ellipses to show that it is an idea that is still going on. If you have opening formula, give it long time ago. The closing formula, give an illustration and that is the end of my story. If you have an idiophone, illustrate it. That is how you're supposed to answer this part. And lastly, we have the classification of oral narratives. Uh, I want you to check that. The trickster narratives, the yoga narratives, uh, the etiological narratives, the dilemma narratives, the myths, the legends. Uh, check all of them for your own good. Actually, and that is the end of our lesson today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. And I'm wishing you all the best.